World-class beaches, world-famous theme parks, year-round beautiful weather, convenient coastal living are just some of the reasons why people move to Florida. But what you may not know is that despite all of these beautiful things, more and more people are choosing to leave Florida. In today's video, we'll look at the shocking and the not so shocking reasons why people are leaving the Sunshine State. By the end of this video, you'll get insight about the flip side of paradise, to help you weigh whether or not Florida is actually for you. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because if you look in the comment section down below, or if you listen online, you'll hear a lot of people making noise that everyone is leaving Florida. And spoiler alert, I'm here to let you know that is not true. However, there are people who are leaving, and we're gonna talk about that today. Today's video is really broken down into three sections here. We're gonna talk about why people choose to move to Florida, why some people have to leave Florida, and why people get to leave Florida. Our state has done nothing but grow over the last five years. Everyone knows that, but you do hear this chatter. It's important to understand why, because there are people who don't think that this is paradise. They come here, they believe it, and they find out really quickly this wasn't for them. There are people who have been here a very long time, maybe even generations now, either because they can't afford it or they just don't agree with what's happening in the state, they're choosing to move. And then there are the people who don't care, they're coming no matter what, but it does have its challenges and we're gonna face those in today's video. If we're meeting here for the first time, my name is Juan Alfala. I'm a local realtor with the True Living Group. And today we're on a mission to help you learn everything there is to know about living here in Tampa Bay, Florida. A little over five years ago, my wife Kate and I sold almost every Everything we own moved 1,200 miles south to the greater Tampa Bay area and have been loving it ever since. Now let's just start with the major reason why people are leaving, Florida's high cost of living. For years, Florida was known as the land of milk and honey for no money. I'm not kidding. People would retire, they had pensions, they would move down because our incredibly favorable tax rates. You don't have a state income tax, there's no estate tax, so when you die, you're able to leave your assets to your family and the government doesn't swoop in and take a portion of that. Those things are very desirable to a lot of people in their senior years. Now, the cost of living has really exploded across the United States, but it has really grown here in Florida as well. But just how expensive is the cost of living in Florida? Well, the average cost of living is about 2% higher than the national average at the time of this recording. And that's just the state average. There's a wide range in the cost of living across the different cities in Florida that are about 8% lower to 21% higher compared to the average US city. Housing cost is a big portion of this. I just literally made a post on social media this week that said Florida has increased 80% in home values since 2018. That is by far the most in the entire country. And that puts a lot of pressure on people who are on fixed incomes and quite frankly, people who don't earn high incomes. The cost of living here in Florida, while we are very close to the national average in housing, it is accelerated quickly to go 80% in a five year period, that's gonna put a heavy burden on people who have, again, fixed incomes and don't make a ton of money. And Florida's really attracted a lot of people who are high income earners from all across the country. They're selling homes for a million dollars or more in areas like California, the Pacific Northwest, maybe even the Northeast or even the Midwest like Chicago. And then they're coming down here and paying cash for single family homes. And it's put a lot of pressure on the people who have lived here, whether it's recently or you know generationally, like we said, before. So this is the biggest thing that I see when people call us about selling their home. This is why they're like, our property taxes have raised beyond the ability we have with our income. And then you stack on top of that inflation, grocery costs, gas costs, energy costs. It's really put a heavy burden on people. And this is one of the major reasons why people are choosing to move out of Florida. The next on our list is a hot topic for residents. Florida's population is steadily growing still. It's slowly becoming overcrowded especially in major cities like Miami, Orlando, and Tampa, where I live. I mean, just last year, we brought in another 5,000 residents to the area. And while that may not sound like a lot to some, that's an entire city to others. <laughs> you know, keep that in mind. And, and I understand those comments down there. You know, Florida's full. We don't want any. Florida's closed. I get it. It can be frustrating, right? There's a lot involved with people moving to the area. The influx of people has led to crowded roads, long commute times, busy beaches, and even longer lines for services, which makes some people 
feel like the sense of peace and quiet that they once knew in Florida is steadily going away. So I can understand that. But there are still many others like myself that would recommend relocating here. It's treated our family incredibly well. My life has changed. Now, are there challenges? Yes, that's why I'm making this video. I am not somebody that's saying that Florida is for everyone. If you love sunshine, opportunity, more freedoms, then this is an area where you should strongly consider checking out. It doesn't mean it's right for you. And I know people are gonna argue, wait to see the comments. I've been here, done that. But you don't live here. I do. And what I've learned over time is our life has gotten better. But I just want to share a transparent and as objective opinion as I possibly can. I'm going to be biased. I live in Florida. I love living here. I don't plan to move. Now, number three on this list is the hot and humid weather. And like I said before, Florida is not for everyone. Some people come down here in the winter and they experience the beautiful Gulf beaches or the Atlantic beaches and they fall in love with Florida. They get a 75 or 85 degree day in the middle of February and their eyeballs get really big. They get big as saucers and they can't wait to move down. And I know that's true because I was one of those people. <laughs> I am someone who believes that snow is something you should go to, not be stuck in. There are people who love the snow. They love the outdoor sports. They love activities that happen in the winter and they just want that type of lifestyle and that is okay. We don't get that here, y'all. It does not snow in Florida. As a matter of fact, the threat of snow in Florida makes people crazy and that happens on the northern side of the state up near the Panhandle. I've told this story before, but our very first year here, I was with a gentleman who lived here in the Gulf Coast and he looked at me, he's like, Juan, have you ever been through a Gulf Coast summer before? I said, no, why? He goes, it's like waking up to a Labrador retriever breathing three inches from your face every day. And I remember him saying that. I was like, oh, I'll be fine. And he was right. Y'all, you sweat and it's wet. The humidity is there. I don't mind. Does it wear on you? Yes. Come September when it's still 90 degrees and you know, you're know you used to weather pattern changes, it can definitely wear on you, right? But would I trade it? No, that doesn't mean it's for you. There are some people who cannot stand the heat and humidity. And if that's something that doesn't work well for you, you've got really one of two options. You don't come, that's the first thing you can do, or you do the snowbird life. And a snowbird is someone who lives up north during the summer and the spring months, and they typically come to Florida in the winter months. They also have the threat of tropical storms, flooding, hurricanes, those things are in play all the time. This is something that we deal with. But y'all, I'm here to tell you, there's 22 million people who live in this state and the state is continuing to grow while we do face those weather challenges and they are real. They weigh those risks just like we do. We live really close to the water. We're less than two miles to the Gulf of Mexico and we understand the risk. And it's easy to say that right? When you haven't been hit by a hurricane. I understand that. I'm not someone who's going to be sit here and be foolish and, and talk about things I don't completely understand. But I'm grateful here in the Tampa Bay area where we live. Tampa specifically has not had a direct shot of a hurricane in over 105 years. Could that change at any given moment? The answer is yes, but we are willing to risk that. We understand we pay a premium on our insurance. It could go up. We'll deal with this. This is what we've made a decision to do as a family because we love living on the Gulf Coast. We love going on walks in the morning, even though it's hot and humid. I'm willing to exchange that four and a half, five months of hot, humid weather that we get here and trade that for the six months of terrible weather we had up north. Take this in consideration. It's something that you really need to think through. I always tell people, if you're considering moving to Florida, come down here in July, August, and September. If you can come down here and hang for three weeks or a week, 10 days, and you can deal with it, then you're probably gonna handle it pretty well here in Florida. If you've got questions or you wanna to contribute to the conversation, I welcome you to drop a comment down in the comment section below. I do answer all of those questions personally. I don't have an assistant down there. If you leave a legitimate comment, I will follow up on that. And what I mean by legitimate is you're not being rude to people, you're not being rude to me. I just throw that stuff aside, I'm not gonna answer it. But if you have legitimate questions or comments, I'm happy to answer those. Also, if you wanna get connected to us, all of my contact information is down below. If you have deeper questions about relocating to the area, don't hesitate to reach out, whether it's here in Tampa Bay or you're looking in other areas. I have a team of real estate agents that all across the state that I connect people to. There's even a link to my calendar down below, so don't hesitate to reach out. Now, another reason people choose to leave are limited job opportunities. Now, this is really going to depend on what area you live in. Here where I live in Tampa, we're one of the hottest job destinations in the country. Miami, obviously also growing like crazy as well, but that's not the same case for the entire state. And this is a 
a humongous state. So keep that in mind. I have heard that the medical industry pays less. If you go look in the comments, it always says that people pay less. In my experience, the clients we've helped relocate here, I have heard from them directly that the job offers are less than where they currently live, but typically they are in an area that has a higher cost of living than where we are here in Tampa. So what I always tell people is go to online calculators. There's a great one. It's called the Forbes Cost of Living Calculator. You can go there, type in what you make for your career, and then put in the city that you're considering relocating to, and it'll tell you how much money you need to make to have the equivalent lifestyle of the place you're considering relocating to. There are a lot of people bringing jobs to the area. There are a lot of remote jobs that are coming to the area as well, and that is where things really start to get skewed because areas like Pasco County, which is a northern suburb of Tampa, areas like Wesley Chapel, Odessa, Lando Lakes, that county at one point had attracted more income earners earning $200,000 or more than anywhere else in the country. You're living in that county, in that community, and the average salary is $47,000, and now all of a sudden people moving in with $200,000 plus, that is gonna put a hurting on your opportunity because it's gonna raise your income taxes, they're gonna have more disposable income, and now you're fighting for the same goods. Welcome to inflation, y'all. That's very, very difficult, but if you've been living somewhere and the cost of opportunity isn't raising and your salary isn't raising at the same speed and velocity that the income is coming in, it is very, very difficult. What we don't understand is the impact sometimes when we move in that our income actually brings on the surrounding community. And I don't think in any way, shape or form, anyone should apologize for what they earn. That is absolutely not how this country works. And I don't believe it's how Floridians think either, but those limited job opportunities and limited income from some of those jobs definitely put a hurt on people and force them to move. The next one on our list is going to be the public school system. And this is another one of those unique conversations, right? US News just ranked Florida the number one state in the United States for public education. And when I shared this, people lost their mind. But listen, this isn't me. This was through their research. K through 12 was actually ranked 10th in the country. But the secondary school system, meaning our colleges, those schools were ranked number one. And the reason that I'm bringing this up is because public perception is that Florida schools are terrible. Truth be told, there is going to be truth to that. Just like everywhere else in the country, you're gonna have pockets where things are not good and you're gonna have pockets where things are amazing. Now, from experience, just like every other place I've ever been, if you have a lot of income, you always get the best public schools. You have the ability to put people in private schools. We've got great charter schools here. We've got STEM and STEAM schools. We've got magnet schools. And Florida is school of choice, so you do have a lot of options. Florida has been notoriously been ranked in the bottom of the country's pay as well. That is statistically proven. You can go out and look into that. So if you're gonna pay your teachers poorly, there's going to be challenges on the back end. But again, this is all gonna be based around where you live. In the interest of full transparency, we homeschool. We live in a world now where I'm no longer bound by geography and you're not either. If you choose to have your children be taught by some of the best in the world, you can fire up the computer and they can literally get lessons from some of the brightest minds on this planet. Your responsibility as a parent is to raise your children to the best of your abilities and if you believe that giving them a specific school is the right choice for them then god bless you you should chase that down next on our list is traffic and congestion and if you're moving from a large city los angeles chicago new york and you come to tampa jacksonville or miami you laugh at what we believe is bad traffic <laughs> right? But if you move from a rural area or if you've lived in areas like Tampa, Miami, and Jacksonville, Orlando over the last 20 years, you've seen the population explode and you've also seen traffic become terrible. A lot of these cities, they were designed to serve four or 500,000 people, not 3 million. The greater Tampa Bay area where I live is roughly 3.2, 3.3 million people. You know, the city of Tampa, four or 500,000 people there. You know, that city was built and designed when there were like 200,000 people there. So of course there's stress, of course there's congestion. And as we all know, when it comes to infrastructure across the United States, it hasn't been a priority. And currently Tampa, where I live, ranks 
24 out of 25 in the most congested cities in America. Now we're talking about the top 300 metros, but being in the top 25, that's not good. And if you've been living here for a long time, that is super stressful. And especially if you have to drive to work. And this is the interesting part, right? Because people hear that those people move here and then they believe that they're the reason why traffic is exploding. The irony is they're not going to work at nine o'clock and they're not coming home at five o'clock. <laughs> so where is the other congestion? Well, of course, it's from the kids, right? Going back and forth. They do venture out and go shopping during the day and it puts pressure on the overall system. And then you add on top of that, the limited public transportation options that you have across the state. This definitely makes things difficult. Florida doesn't have subways. We're at sea level, y'all. You can't put trains underground when there's water down there. Just think of that. We don't have elevated train systems here and the state is huge. It's expansive and there wasn't a lot of public transportation thought of when they were building out the state. We got a great highway system, but you know, in terms of getting from one city to the next or working inner city, these things can be difficult. You know, Uber, Lyft, people are using scooters and bikes, but that's not great when it's 95 degrees outside. There's a lot of challenges that come along with that. On a bright note, we do have what's called the Bright Line that is a high-speed rail. This has been a private endeavor that is running from Miami all the way up into Orlando, and now that expansion is, is allegedly taking place and coming down into Tampa. So that's kind of exciting, but y'all, it's pretty limited for the most part. We do have incredible airports here in the state. Can't complain about that. TPA has been ranked as one of the best airports in the entire country. There's a lot to deal with. I know we unpacked a ton today, y'all, and I just want to keep it in front of you because listen, this is an incredible state. There is a lot to love about Florida, but just like everywhere else in this country, it has its challenges. That's not going to change, right? What those challenges are, they will probably continue to evolve over time. Hopefully we get better in the things that really impact our residents and people. You know, if you're considering moving to the area, don't hesitate to reach out with more questions like this. I made this video because we do a lot of Zoom calls. We've done over 190 this year with people considering moving to the area and we answer a lot of questions like this. So I'm happy to go deeper. All of my contact information is listed down below. There's even a link to my calendar so you can schedule a time that's most convenient for you. And as I say every single time on every video, until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.